A very warm welcome to you. Many thanks for finding time to be with us on the program. As you know, we remain your source for all the latest events and happenings in the world of insurance. Now, if today is your first time, I would say, where have you been? As they say, better late than never. So welcome on board. On the line of this week, first we join Faith and our guest, Mr. Alexander Eden, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Amplified Digital P. On the CEO rendezvous, where they discuss this topic, the slow adoption of technology by the Nigerian insurance industry. Speaking during the interview, Mr. Edem said that the Nigerian insurance industry has been slow to react to changing consumer behavior because of their slow technological deployment to drive their operations. Take a listen. Consumer behavior is changing. There is a demographic shift as well. Um, so what you are seeing is that you are seeing a hugely younger population. Um, you are also seeing a population, a younger population that is breaking out of their traditional ways of doing things in the past, right? Um, as such, that changing consumer behavior is now leading those types of customer segments to demand for a different experience from their insurance, you know, um, companies. On the lineup also, we'll bring you highlights from the press briefing of the Nigerian Insurance Association, NIA, where the chairman, Mr. Ganiu Musa, told insurance correspondents of their plans for the year. According to him, the Nigerian insurance industry has paid over 1 billion naira in claims to the insureds who suffer losses from the NSAS protests that rocked the country in 2020. Take a listen. <music> number of uh, people that were affected by the, the you know, the answers in, uh, and, uh, you know, you know, other, other claims, actually, I mean, I told you in 2020, 225 billion in, uh, in claims payment, almost half of the premium that we, that we received. But, you know, the, the revision in the plan rates uh, for some of those policies that are, uh, you know, affected on the, on the fire policy. So, so overall, that, that gave I would say a, a, a better 2022 January with no experience uh, if you compare it to, uh, you know, to, to 2021. These and more are what we have lined up for your viewing pleasure this week. So sit back, relax and enjoy it. This was in just a moment. Please stay with us. Very warm welcome to you. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the CEO Rendezvous on this week edition of the program. My name is Faith Uwade. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, the company of Mr. Alexander Edem, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Amplify Digital Agency. Together, we'll be looking at the topic, the slow adoption of technology by the Nigerian insurance industry. Thank you so very much, Mr. Eden, for joining us on the program. And also thank you for letting us into your very beautiful home. Thank you very much for having me as well. Okay. So uh, I was at a function recently and somebody mentioned the fact that um, technology is the new currency, not even of the future, but of now. <laughs> but of now, as, as a tech person, um, are you surprised at the pace of technological development, especially in the financial services industry, uh, banking sector to be specific? All right. Thank you very much. I don't think there are any surprises, actually. Um, for a lot of um, industry analysts, these um, changes and these sort of um, innovations that are happening today are things that were forecasted way before. And... Um, the good thing with technology is that technology serves as an enabler of things, right? It's not really the technology itself that is the solution, but then it helps enable the solution. So it helps drive the vehicle that brings that solution to people. Um, and as such, if you see technology in that space and in that term, you will see that to a large extent, uh, most of the um, advancements, most of the innovations that we're seeing today are things that 
you know, were already forecasted to happen. And um, we are also hoping that more and more of these types of innovation and these types of um, sort of advancements are things that we'll begin to see as well in other sectors of the economy. Okay, well said. Um, despite all the, the changes and the technological innovations we are seeing in the financial services sector, um, the insurance industry has no reason to the occasion. Um, in terms of deploying technology to also help and enable um, their products and services. Um, what would you say uh, is the forefront um, of some of the challenges or that have hindered the insurance industry from keying into using technology to drive the operations in Nigeria? So, so, so I think that um, the challenges are challenges that are both external and internal. Right. Um, the external challenges have to do with the infrastructure, the environment, and the sort of enabling, you know, space for some of these insurance things to get adopted, insurance policies to get adopted. But more importantly, there's also that internal component of it, wherein the stakeholders within the insurance sector themselves um, have really been slow in forecasting that look, technology is going to be a major driver of our business within the next five to 10 years. And as such, we should start investing in those technology uh, um, systems, technology platforms that would help drive that. Um, it has also gotten to the stage where they have now realized, you know, albeit a bit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a bit late, late. that Consumer behavior is changing. There is a demographic shift as well. Um, so what you are seeing is that you are seeing a hugely younger population. Um, you are also seeing a population, a younger population that is breaking out of their traditional ways of doing things in the past. Right? Um, as such, that changing consumer behavior is now leading those types of customer segments to demand for a different experience mm -hmm. from oh. their insurance you know, um, companies. Um, and the insurance industry has been slow to react to those changing consumer behaviors um, because even that customer segment actually will you know, benefit the most from having technology drive the kind of solutions that you will give to that industry. So um, a couple of problems, you know, I would say both internal and external have affected that. Okay, now let's, because oftentimes um, when you talk about uh, the insurance, when you engage operators within the insurance space and you talk to them about um, using technology to drive their operations, um, customers' behavior are constantly changing. Uh, one of the first things they, they will tell you is, oh, technology is not cheap. <laughs> but I just want to ask you as a tech person, uh, do you think cost or finance is really the first and one of the major problems that, that have hindered the insurance industry from embracing technology? It's, it's interesting because I recently saw a research paper that was done in Ukraine. Um, the same research, Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the very same one. The very same one, okay. <laughs> so the research paper was um, by, it was an investigation into the marketing strategies of life insurance companies in Ukraine. Okay. And it looked at different marketing strategies and market entry um, opportunities for those life insurance companies. But I think one very critical thing that I took out of that was the fact that the cost of acquiring a new insurance customer was significantly less, almost between 50% and 75% less than traditional forms of acquiring customers, which basically were through the brokers and the agents, agents. right? And so we th that research just showed that in terms of the life insurance business and as well i would you know sort of you know open this up to even the general insurance business as well that it is significantly less to adopt technology in acquiring a 
digital customer or a customer for your insurance policies. Almost 50 to 75 percent was what the um, um, research paper showed. And if you bring that into Nigeria, you know, granted our system is not fully digitalized. We are not um, operating in a system that enables true and true technology to go all the way. But it just also lends to the narrative that, you know, technology adoption itself, in the, in the immediate, you make some substantial investments on your technology pro, um, platforms. Platform. However, over a very long period of time, that return on investment begins to pay off for you because you continually get less and less you know terms in terms of cost in acquiring a customer okay now uh, mr Aylen, let me just uh, chip in this question um often time and i've also been at forums where um conversations around companies coming together you don't have to go it alone coming together to pull investment and invest in technology but we don't often say because of this uh, stiff competition that we find in our environment businesses are not willing to collaborate instead of cooperating when it comes to investments on on technology so so i think that to that point i think that that's where regulatory agencies really have a lot of work to do um, so individually the individual business players might not be very willing to sort of co you know collaborate with other players who they would see as competitors okay. Um, however, the regulatory agencies um, have that sort of responsibility to be able to say, look, um, we can sort of set up this enabling platform that is technology driven that you can then key into either with APIs and other, you know, endpoints to key into this, our, this our platform and then extend the capabilities that you have for your basic um, insurance policy. So, what we have seen as, as, a, as a marketing technology agency that has done a lot of work with several insurance companies, what we have seen is pretty much the insurance companies have their core insurance technology sitting outside of their you know, websites, mobile apps, and web assets. Now, they don't own this other part of that. They don't own sort of the back end of that technology. They just tend to you know, fuse their um, websites, mobile applications and all of that with this back-end technology that they have. And that's, you know, the MO basically with all of the different insurance companies. But if you had a sort of central point that is owned by the regulators or managed by the regulators wearing insurance businesses, and it, it's almost like it's a technology stack for you, right? you come in and you say, look, we want to um, simplify our claims management process. And there's a claims management model that has already been created that is there. You come in as an insurance company and then you key into that claims management model and you extend that capability for your insurance company. If your own um, problem isn't claims, but in terms of onboarding, a new customer, customer, there's an onboarding solution model that is already there and you just come in and key into it. In that way, you have all of the insurance companies, you know, keying into that and using that to extend the capabilities of their individual businesses rather than, you know, working with competitors that they might not actually trust. <laughs> okay, so for, for insurance industry, it's uh, particularly uh, surprising to see that Oftentimes, when you engage them, they'll say, oh, they're going to steal our customers. It will share. <laughs> it will share. So, but for, they are also suffering in the long run because you find people who are by nature fraudulent with their claims. It's easily, it's easy for them as the market is mm -hmm. to defraud one insurance company A and move to the next one. They don't have a central data or a central platform where you can even check this particular customer or client mm -hmm. on um, his claims history, his okay. claims portfolio, and all of that. And yet, they're still sticking to, oh, we don't want to share so that they don't steal our customers. I just want your thoughts on it. So, so, so absolutely, absolutely. Look at what is happening within the financial services space where um, because of the between identification systems of the BPN and the national identification number, 
what new tech companies that are into the credit space do is that they verify using either or both of those identification systems. And as well, there is now a credit score that is attached to each individual so that you cannot move from one loan company mm -hmm. to the other loan company and keep collecting loans and not pay back because each loan company would assess you, assess your credit score and your credit ratings and give you loans based off of that. So to what you have said, again, it boils down to the fact that the different stakeholders in the industry needs to actually come together to be able to fashion a system that works in that way, you know, so that you know, um, all of the fraud that is associated with, you know, claims and all of that, you can easily use technology to be able to, you know, significantly reduce cases of fraud from claims and all of that because you can track the history of every individual based off of the claims that they have, you know, forwarded, what they've gotten for it, you know, and as such, if they are coming to your business afresh, as a new customer, <laughs> a new they are also coming with, you can also access that data, you know, immediately to say, look, I can see all of your past history. I understand where you are coming from because that even helps me to fashion out the best product for you because I already see, or you know, to even fashion to say, this is a risk I want to take. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that this onus is on all stakeholders within the insurance business to come together and fashion out what will be the best you know, method to do that. Obviously, technology is that enabler that can then help. Okay, sir. Um, in other clients, we've seen InsurTech uh, come, disrupt the whole system, the lemonades of this world. Um, even though we haven't seen uh, much of that, or we haven't seen that in, in the Nigerian uh, space, but what would you say is um, is hindering or why are we not seeing uh, like some of us who are waiting for such disruption to happen in the insurance industry? So, so I think that there are a couple of factors to that. And um, let me first say that I'm an optimist. So I believe that InsurTech will rise. InsurTech is actually starting, it's bubbling under as we speak. Right? It hasn't gotten to the surface yet, but it's bubbling under. I know a couple of InsurTech you know, founders that are doing amazing work within that insurance space. Um, um, so the, it hasn't gotten to that space yet that we would you know, start seeing a lot of attraction, but I know that they are there. Um, so like I said, a couple of factors um, are, are, are things that you would attribute to that. So the industry itself isn't typically seen as an industry that innovates, right? Um, is not typically seen as an industry that is, um, that is as appealing as the financial services space, you know, where you know that there are a lot of players there and all of that. So typically people have been sort of skeptical in terms of going into that space and driving, you know, sort of action. And, and you see, some of the things that have helped in the financial services space is that people took a leap um, very, very um, uh, confident founders felt that, look, I have a confident product. I'm confident in the product that I have, and so I want to you know, take the very first steps. And they were sort of the pay setters, the guys that led the way, right? Um, we are not seeing that yet in the insurtech space. Um, by the time we start seeing one or two people sort of start leading the way in terms of how the business model would work, from an insurtech perspective, you would start seeing, one, a lot of copycats coming into the space, space, but also genuine people who now realize that, oh, this business model can be cracked. You know, so sort of what you see with the e-commerce space and what, you know, Konga and Jumia did in the early days of just blazing that trail. We also need sort of those trailblazers within the insurtech to sort of make that way, and then you start to see other people come into the space. I think regulation is another challenge that we're seeing in that space. So typically, even insurance operators today complain about the very nature of the regulation, the fact that it's stiff, it's not flexible, and all of that and all that. So a lot of people see this from the outside as well, even players who want to come into the insurance space. And they are already bracing up you know, for that 
you know, uh, that real regulatory pushback sort of that you're looking at. Okay, so let me use this, your tech expression now. Please, yeah. Can they just be fast and crack? <laughs> And crack, and, the crack code. The <laughs> and crack the code of the regulator. So we have real disruption in the system. So, so truly, when real disruption comes in, you would see that the role of the regulator will then switch and then change, right, from where it is today, right? Um, because real disruption takes value and directs it to the customer directly. And so because of that value that has been directed to the customer, there is demand generation that is done because of that. So customers themselves are the ones requiring and requesting that type of service or that type of platform that you're giving them. It then becomes you know, a no-brainer at the end of the day because you can't stop you know, millions of people who want to access this type of thing in this sort of way right, from doing that because it's, it's, it's value, it's tremendous value to them. So the role of the regulator then switches from, okay, we understand that this has come to stay. How do we then sort of manage this realities vis-a-vis -vis our own constitutional you know, requirements and, and, and how we were set up? How do we manage this so that you know, exposure is, is, is minimal and then the right things are actually done? So it begins to, it begins to change from there. Um, we are going to get there. I don't think it's um, 10, 15 years from now. I think it's something of, you know, two and a half to five years from now, we will start seeing a lot of disruption within that space. Welcome back. We now bring you excerpts from the NIA press briefing that took place at NEM Insurance PLC. The press briefing afforded insurance and pension journalists the opportunity to ask the leadership of the NIA critical questions about the operations of the Nigerian insurance industry. Happy viewing. We've been working uh, with the uh, our regulators, NICO, as well as the National Assembly and the Ministry of Finance, uh, to do a comprehensive review of uh, the Insurance Act. Uh, and I'm sure uh, you have all been following the developments. The Consulted Insurance Bill is uh, currently on the floor of the House of Reps. It's gone through the committee work, the public hearings, and you know, and uh, the rest. Uh, so it's. Uh, you know, making its way through the legislative uh, process. Uh, of course, because it is still a work in progress, we expect that to be the major uh, issue that we will pursue in the course of this year and uh, bring it to, to fruition. Uh, a particular aspect of the law that, uh, you know, was tested significantly was the issue of the definition of, uh, you know, capital uh, in, in the Insurance Act, which again, uh, if you have followed the issue of the uh, recapitalization, which uh, I think is one of the questions that uh, came out from this uh, uh, you know, interruption, uh, it was the main issue uh, that was uh, uh, you know, really uh, you know, preventing a successful uh, or, or appropriate implementation of the program. Uh, because we also realized the, the difficulties and the time of going through the regular lawmaking process, we seize the opportunity of the annual, uh, you know, finance act, you know, to carve out the issue of the definition of, uh, you know, capital, and uh, with the support of uh, NICOM and the Ministry of Finance, we're able to get that into the, you know, finance act, uh, you know, 2021. So that has been, uh, you know, resolved. It's a major achievement for for us uh, because it was a major stumbling block, you know, to the continuation of the, the uh, recapitalization process. So I'm sure when we now, you know, talk about the, the status of that, uh, hopefully we'll be able to expand a little bit, uh, uh, you know, better on it. I know a number of the themes uh, from the interaction with the press is the, you know, question of the insurance uh, adoption of, uh, you know, technology. Uh, we're also happy to report that the uh, is also actively 
uh, you know, taking the lead in, in this in this instance by putting in place a comprehensive, uh, you know, portal. And I'm um, happy to report also that uh, a number of our members have, uh, you know, increased their usage and their adoption of uh, the portal and the, you know, the uploads. And we're working actively with uh, those who have had challenges or are still having, you know, challenges uh, to escalate to the designated, uh, you know, officers. Uh, if, if, if that that portal is up and doing, uh, some of the issues that we're talking about in terms of data and the rest will be a lot easier to, uh, you know, resolve. Uh, you know, a number of us are, you know, interested in the issues of the market development. I'm sure we've, we've you know, raised questions in, 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 in that area, what, you know, we're doing, how to grow the market and the rest. Uh, it's an area that has been engaging the attention of uh, the association. Uh, of course, the regulatory environment is a, is a key issue, and they were also pleased uh, to note that uh, we, we have been collaborating with, uh, you know, NECOM, to you know, really push up the you know the market development uh, you know efforts, sir, and you provided us with uh, the playing space. I think we would still want to know if the data is available, the premium that was generated last year. Um, is there any new thing that the industry is bringing on board to help to deepen internet penetration? That is our time on the program this week. Many thanks for being with us. Keep a date with us next week as we kickstart our special report on women in insurance and pension industry to commemorate the 2022 International Women's Day. Now, it promises to be exciting, so keep a date with us. Until then, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, Amon Finance TV. There are tons of interesting videos for you to see. Our social media handles are on the screen. Feel free to connect with us. My name is Lucy Lube. From all of us here, it's goodbye.